Hi guys, this is gonna be a video of Tenda Wi-Fi router model N301 It's gonna be like an opening and setup and yeah like it's an all-in-one setup video for you guys to make it easy So yeah, uh, out of the pack, you know, I ordered it in Amazon uh, It cost me around $8.99 router which I bought on like 21st May and today is like 6 june so i got to use it for more than a week or to be exact 15 days i used it so this is gonna be a review after that so for starters my old tp link router wr740n was kind of a bulky router and it lasts longer but it failed due to my mishandling i would say so yeah i had the opportunity to buy a new router so I went to Amazon and bought the Tenda router which came in a plastic wrap box, literally, no cardboard. Just plastic wrapped outer box. No. But don't judge the product by its cover, but the cost was like $8.99, cheapest at the time. So, you know, the magic of Prime you get in one day. So the inside the box you get a small light router, I mean literally it's very small and light compared to my old router and filled with features. And a charger and Ethernet cable, by the way there is no information about the version of Ethernet cable, you don't know like whether it's a CAT 5E or it's CAT 5 or CAT 6. I mean, there is nothing written on the Ethernet cable which is provided, so assuming that the router is able to handle 300 megabytes per second. I mean, yeah, I mean, you should get around 100 MB or around 300 MB data transfer should be possible, but hey, no information given on the cable. And also the internet cable is not shielded, so it's only good to use indoors. Now, when it comes to overall setup, it was very easy and straightforward. And compared to my old router, the interface, the web interface for configuring the password, username was very straightforward. And by the way, when you first plug in, your particular router will be in the name of Tenda and whatever the model name, followed by the model name. Then comes the optional changes, like if say you want to change the DNS address to Cloudflare or Google or Apple, whatever. You need to, yeah, by the way, you need to go and change it complete i mean yeah it's, it's a bit of bulky process you need to choose static ip address option and man i mean that's bulky but by default it chooses like ans some australia based servers if you're happy with it yeah i am because i get faster speed from them that's magic but whatever and other features are as following van lan van configuration lan configuration but yeah, I mean, it's easy, straightforward, and man, I mean, super duper interface. I like the interface. I mean, you can even block the IP address. Like if you, if someone else is using the internet and you don't know who is, you can simply block the IP address, which you think doesn't come under your particular home and that's the sweetest thing and it's like it's very straightforward you don't even need to reboot it for the acting to work in my old life old router like the tp link i need i had to do reboots every time i need to i mean here you don't even need to do reboots like i mean even changing the dns address that's a great thing but now when it comes to the ports it has one van port 300 Mbps and three LAN ports output. Uh, yeah, they don't have a color differentiation like the old ones, like the yellow and blue color they used to have. This one is plain white. Uh, the only way you can figure out what is WAN and what is LAN is by the symbols below the, what you can say, small, uh, what, plastic inscription below the port. Like below the WAN port, you will see WAN and below the LAN ports you will see one two three yeah that's a bit thing so you just need to be careful at that and yeah it comes with uh, up-to-date WPS2 encryption to protect your internet from hacking now when it comes to on and off it's just a I mean there's no push button you basically you 
take the plug off, you know, the charger, whatever, the adapter plug. And by the way, it works on like nine volts adapter. Get it out and your router stops. No on and off buttons. And yeah, my situation, I have like five Mbps, five Mbps per second internet connection. And in reality, it's like it, 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 the maximum it reaches four Mbps. But whatever, the router is natively supports around 300 Mbps per second speed. And yeah, when it comes to the range, it is pretty good, you know, even inside the house and like, especially if you are sitting in some corner of a room, corner room and you have walls coming in between, I mean, little concrete walls, the waves travel till this particular point. My old router was like, what I mean, it was like, hey, man, I don't have the power. This one beats it. I get the signal till my last room of my apartment so that's great now uh yes the design is very minimalistic and white color and it uh you know just mixes with your surrounding you know it doesn't stand out like a weird thing or something disturbing so it just dissolves into your background just need to you just forget that it was there someone told it it's that simple and when it comes to features, additional features compared to my old uh, router, it has the un universal repeater mode. Basically, it amplifies the Wi-Fi signal from your neighbor if you are stealing from them. And then it has the WISP. It's kind of a repeater, but it's not a straightforward repeater. And then comes the AP mode. It helps you create your own internet, sort of. And it does has Wi-Fi timer in addition to parent control. Well, in our house, there are like five devices using the internet and in a given time, there may be like two to three devices using them same time. But I mean, I'm surprised the router handles the load without compromising like buffering or lags. So that's great. Yeah, you do get reduced in quality drops, but hey, what else you should I mean, think about like if you are getting 5 Mbps speed, right? Now... After all these things, I want to just put few things forward, like things such as our charger. I mean, the adapter, sorry. The adapter for the router is so good. I mean, it's it's small. I'm not saying it's not, but the pins are bigger. So the chance of breaking and, you know, it's well spaced. The design is very, what I would like to call it as... Once again, it's, it's it's very balancing design. You know, earlier routers, they used to be in rectangular shape, you know, thin and would be in good height. So they, it was very hard. I mean, they used to move around in the socket and I, they used to make a hole. They didn't used to fit tightly. I mean, this one is like a butter. I mean, just press it and it stays there. No movement. So the adapter, I would say, is the best thing. And the be second best thing out of the Tenda adapter is, man, I mean, it doesn't heat up. Like I have D-Link router also. That adapter, even the TP-Link one, they, they become like around 40 degrees hot after usage. They even go above 40 degrees. But the Tenda one is like room temperature and hardly it goes like just above room temperature. So... You need to really, I mean, and even the components, uh, even the top of the router doesn't get heated. Like my old TP-Link one was like, it, it used to get very hot, literally where you can feel that it's about normal. And the D-Link one, same issue. I mean, it gets super duper hot. But this Tenda one, man, it's, it's just warm, but not hot. And yeah. Well, guys, you may say that, hey, bro, you know, we have like TP-Link, D-Link. Why didn't you bought those adapters or sorry, those routers? Why didn't you bought TP-Link and D-Link router? Well, it's simple. I just like the design, which is minimalistic and matches my taste. And thank you for seeing this video and see you next time. Subscribe to KSHU.